guys welcome back to my youtube channel in today's tutorial i'll be recreating this dress the first time i came across this dress was on tiktok and it's called the delphina satin plated dress the second time i came across the dress was on lima's empire in nigerian brand the delphina satin plated dress as the name implies is made using a pleated satin fabric meanwhile lima's empire used a crepe fabric to make theirs and since i realized that i might not be able to come across this pleated satin fabric on time i decided to make use of a crepe fabric to make mine guys if you can you know get your hands on a pleated satin fabric the dress will come out stunning so i decided to just make use of crepe because that's what i was able to use at the moment you can use duchess you can use any fabric of choice guys you can use bridal satin etc just use a lovely fabric a lovely color that will come out nice on you so let's proceed the important materials needed for this tutorial include pattern drafting materials fabric of choice with matching thread invisible zipper very important you need your scissors a cello tape the clear ones you need elastic and you need your bias tape the first thing you need to do is to bring your pattern paper and fold it into two remember this dress is a very long dress so you might have to join two pattern papers i'm sure you can already see the cello tape i use in joining two pattern papers together so now you're going to fold your pattern paper into two after folding it the next step is to start drafting okay and as per usual i'm just going to use this masking tape to just hold it a bit so that it doesn't move around too much we're still going to move it but i just need a masking tape that i can easily open and all of that so now my shoulder width is 15 inches 15 divided by 2 gives me 7.5 measure your own shoulder width and divide by 2 as well okay so i'm going to go ahead to mark 7.5 and the wideness of the neckline i'll be making use of for now is three inches i went ahead to mark that then as usual a shoulder is not straight so i'm going to go down by one inch from the shoulder area and i'll connect from that one inch shoulder slope to the three inches neckline now the next step is to mark our armhole and as usual as we've done so many times we need to calculate our armhole line and that is by dividing your bust circumference by six plus 1.5 inches my bust circumference is 38 inches divided by six gives 6.3 inches then plus 1.5 inches gives 7.8 inches that's approximately eight inches so i'll go ahead now to mark that eight inches and proceed to draw that out into a straight line after doing that i'm going to proceed to label the line ahl as an armhole line so if you see h i'll just know that it's armhole line then the next one is to go ahead to measure my bust point my bust point is 10 inches i'm going to mark that 10 inches and my under bust is 13 inches i'm going to go ahead to mark that my waistline is 16.5 i'm going to mark that as well i'll go ahead to mark them again 10 13 and 16.5 just to enable me to get a straight line that's why i marked it twice so i'm going to go ahead to connect the points together and label bp that's bust point i will also label this one under bust that's ub then the last line is my waistline which i'm going to also label w l the next step is to go ahead to mark my hip point that's your waist to the widest part of your hip mine is 10 inches so i'm going to go ahead to mark 10 inches from the waistline and i'm going to go ahead to connect the lines and label hp please listen attentively at this point our next step is to measure the length of our dress because of the ruch by the side the length you, you have to take um, into consideration the ruch by the side when taking your measurement for my own dress i measured from my shoulder to the floor that's floor length like it was touching the floor and i had 59 inches okay so um and as you can see it wasn't even as long as it should be but for it to be very long like the one in the middle the one by lima's empire you need to add about five to six inches extra to your full length because the ridge by the side takes a lot of fabric and reduces the length at that side but if you like the way mine turned out and how the black one turned out all you just need to do is to measure your floor length guys it's going to go up due to the ridge by the side to mark my dress length i'm going to begin from the shoulder 
and i'm going to mark from the shoulder to the end of the dress my dress length is 59 inches and i'll add extra one inch for seam allowance what i'm going to do at this point now is to mark 59 then extra one inch for allowance okay so i'm going to label the dress length area dress length and i'll label the other parts the allowance now the next step is to work on the armhole area and i'll do that by measuring what i have at the shoulder area which is 7.5 that's my shoulder width divided by two i'll mark that same thing on this armhole line and i'll connect the point this is just to get a straight line we're about to uh, you know get our armhole curve so i'm going to go ahead to connect the line okay then the line i'm going to divide what i have on that line by two and what i have there is eight inches so eight inches divided by two is four and on that line at that point i'm going to go in by 0 0.5 okay after going in by 0 0.5 i am going to also mark my bust circumference divided by four my bust circumference is 38 38 divided by four is 9.5 so i'm going to mark that and now we're going to go ahead to form our armhole curve it's that easy okay so i'm going to connect from this point to the 0 0.5 inch so we went in by and from that point i'm going to connect to the side using my curved ruler the next step is to mark my waist circumference my waist circumference is 30 inches 30 inches divided by 4 gives me 7.5 so on the waistline i'm going to go ahead to mark 7.5 after marking that, I'm going to go ahead to connect that with the straightest part of my curved ruler and I'll be working with one inch seam allowance. So I'll mark one inch, one inch and I'll also connect as I did before. On my hip line, my hip circumference is 42 inches. 42 divided by 4 gives me 10.5. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead to mark that 10.5 and I'm going to use the my curved ruler again to connect from the waistline to the hip line that's the straightest part of my curved ruler and as usual i'm going to add one inch allowance and i'll connect as before okay now the next step is to also go to the end of the dress that's the dress length and also divide my hip circumference by four which gave me 10.5 i would also mark the same thing on the dress length and on the allowance line to make it easier you can just mark the same thing you marked on your hip line on the dress length line and i'll add one inch seam allowance just like i did at the hip line so what i'm going to do now is to use my long ruler to connect from the waistline to the dress length area if you don't have this long ruler don't be scared just you know mark that 10.5 inches or i mean your hip circumference divided by four at each interval then keep connecting it you know step by step just for it for you to get a straight line now the next step is to create the root okay from the waistline i would like to go up by 2.5 inches note you mustn't use 2.5 inches you can use two you can use three you can use four okay but you don't you don't want it to be too wide okay so i'm going to go ahead now to also mark that 2.5 inches at this point like i said use what you want four 4.5 but make sure it's not too wide now below the hip area i'm going to go down by 6.5 inches note you can use five inches you can use six inches you don't want it to be too small so that by the time you tie your root you're not even seeing the the circular part okay so i'm going to use um 6.5 inches at that point then and on the waistline itself i'll be going in by three inches and as you can see what i marked is three inches for emphasis purpose i went up from the waistline by 2.5 inches i went down by 6.5 inches and i went inwards by three inches okay then i'm going to go ahead to connect the points using a curvy method you can use your curved ruler basically in order to avoid stressing yourself too much you can just use your free hand don't mind i'm just doing serere you can just use your free hand to connect the points okay after all the serere i did i still went ahead to use my free hand to make the curve the way i want it okay see guys just go ahead and draw a nice looking curve at that point that's it basically so on the hip line i will go ahead now to measure five inches we're going to we're about to start our slash and spread okay 
i'll go ahead to mark five inches at that point and on the allowance area I'll also mark the five inches this is what i mean by you can keep marking it little by little if you don't have a long ruler so i'll keep marking my five inches step by step until i get to the top just to get my straight line okay after doing that the next step is to divide the lines into equal halves so i'm going to mark the lines mark one one inches one 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 so it's you know it's five inches now so we're going to divide it into five equal parts and i'm going to go ahead to connect all the points into a straight line okay after extending the lines now i'll go in with different colors of marker in order to help me when i'm doing my slash and spread i just you know eyeballed it just eyeballed it and divided the lines into about four equal parts guys you can decide to measure or just divide the lines into equal part mine is not even equal because i eyeballed it do you get so this is going to help us very well when we are doing our slash and spread method and you will find out the importance of the line okay so just do what i said i forgot to elongate this line so i'm just going to do that now after doing that i decided to add one extra inch to my slash and spread i felt it's going to give it you know more um um bulk more rich at that side so i decided to add extra one inch to my slash and spread okay that was what i just did and i elongated the line to the floor just i started the same extra one inch basically so now i'm going to go ahead to open this pattern and here is what it looks like okay so i'm going to fold it back and go ahead to cut off the shoulder area because now we're about to work on the neckline okay so because the shoulder area the armhole area and i'll cut off the other part make sure your pattern is folded before you cut off or just make sure your pattern is folded okay after doing this we're going to go ahead to work on the neckline okay so for the neckline i'm going to go towards the neck width area remember we used the neck width of three inches but this time around i'm going to go in more by 0.5 inches as you see me marking okay then at the midpoint i'm going to go down by 5.5 inches that's how low i want my neckline to be then i'm going to connect with my curved ruler from that neck width area to the neck depth area that to my new neck depth area basically okay for the side i don't want the side to be too low i don't want my boobs to be showing so there's a way i'm going to connect it guys just do this part however you want it if you've been doing mono strap dresses before now then you should know what you would want it to look like but as for me i am trying to avoid my bust to be showing or my cleavage as the case may be now on the shoulder slope area i'm going to go in by one inch and i'll mark that after which i'll connect with my curved ruler to the armhole line okay after connecting that i will proceed with my scissors to cut everything out just as shown after doing that the next step is to go to the length of this dress by the side okay remember that both sides of the dress are not equal one is longer than one so the shorter part is what we're working on at this point now you're gonna do this to your preference but for me i want the side to be shorter by 16 inches okay so what i marked at that point is 16 inches and now i'm going to connect from that point to the dress length area using a curve or a curvy method okay you can use your free hand you can use anything you have just make sure you form a curve that you like you can you know draw it as many times as possible until you arrive at what you want now i'll go ahead to cut out my preferred curve and see how it looks like now i'm going to slash this part okay just like we planned okay we're doing slash and spread i'll cut off the ruched part okay and i'll proceed to continue with my slash and spread guys 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 before you continue slashing and spreading calm down let us label our pattern because if we continue to cut off the slash and spread area and we don't label before you know we'll start trying to figure out which one is number one which one is number two so i'm going to go ahead and so label because i don't like stress so one two three four five six i would also place arrows to indicate the direction of the slash and spread okay just to help us you know so that when you are slashing and spreading you're not distressed which uh which way is it going is it going up is it going down we don't want that stress okay now i'm going to go ahead to cut off the rest 
this last part guys as you can see it's not straight so what i'm going to do now is to connect from this point to the top okay then proceed to cut out with the scissors in our next tutorial which will be the second part of this tutorial i would explain how we would slash and spread everything on a fresh pattern paper and how we're going to cut it on fabric and stitch it together i'll see you guys in my next video if at this point you are yet to subscribe endeavor to hit the subscribe button turn on post notification and as usual if you enjoyed watching hit the like button and leave me comments below if you have any questions and i would answer everything bye for now and i'll see you in the next one